see you. What's up? What's going on, man? Ah, just impressing people with our car magnets. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Legit. We're upper class now. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, we're a class. <laughs> well. <laughs> we're two guys in a car with a camera. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> And with that, we welcome everyone to the commute. I will be your driver. And I will be your passenger. Let's get some stories. See, I got more stories than it looks like because I yep. had to print up a lot. I was running short on time. Short on stories. So, let's start out with... Wait, where do I want to start at? Walmart. Walmart? Always good stories with Walmart. Uh, Portland, Oregon is pulling away from Walmart. Okay. They uh, said that they, they don't wish to invest in them anymore because they are not socially responsible. Uh, they currently have $36 million invested in Walmart, mm -hmm. which is 2.9% of the city's investment portfolio. Wow. And they put together a uh, socially responsible investment protocol mm -hmm. back in 2013, uh, last October. And they said that, you know, they studied up on them and uh, their controversial business and labor practices do not allow them to uh, morally support them mm -hmm. anymore. But I thought that was, uh, that was a bold move for a city that big to say, go screen. Usually people bow down to Walmart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, any way they can, Walmart comes in and says, this is the way things are going to be. And the cities go, okay. Well, usually you can't find a community that'll agree on a set of you know, social rules. Yeah, yeah, that's the truth. You know? They just come in and they'll rape a town, they don't care. Yeah. I mean, I could go on and on, that's, you know, that's what they make documentaries about. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was one called uh, Walmart, the, what was it called? The High Cost of Low Living or something like that. Uh -huh. And it was about just how they environmentally destroy towns, they, yeah. you know, economically destroy towns. So. You know, they were building the one in Kennett, in PA. Right. And uh, Kennett was saying, well, you can build here, but we'd like all our buildings to kind of look the same, you know, mm -hmm. have the same feel and look, and so you got to build it that way. And they said, <laughs> no. Uh-uh. No, and they said, uh, so they said, okay, we can build it your way, but we're going to have local contractors build it. And they said, no, mm -hmm. no, we have our own guys that come up from Texas. They literally have a contracting crew from Texas yeah. that comes up and builds every single one of these. And uh, Kennett said, okay. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> sure thing. You got it. Well, they save on building materials and stuff that way. Yeah, you know, they got to transport it. Son of a bitch. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> Missing that later. Well, he got the bus. So ah, that's, that's good. Then. It's more important that's good than, day for uh, him. than a Tootsie Pop. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they come in and, and they build these huge buildings because they get these tax breaks from these towns. Like, hey, we'll come into your town, yeah. but we don't pay taxes for five years. <laughs> and then they go, okay, because they figure five years later they're going to get all the tax money yeah. you know, coming in from them. Well, five years later, they just move to the next town over, and they leave these huge buildings up that nobody's going to rent. No, no. You know, and it's up to the town to either demolish it or... as big as that is. Yeah, leave it empty. So, good for Portland. Good for them. Yeah. Uh, Walmart said, you know, they still plan on expanding in Portland. You know, they're like, we don't care if you invest in us. We... Thanks for your money. <laughs> Other people who don't care are or people, people walking walk down the street. Down the middle of the road. This guy cares though. <laughs> One way or another. God, we need up, outside sir. cameras. Uh, especially now with the weather getting nice. Yeah. Yep, that's gonna turn into a whole thing. Oh my lord. And we need to have it on a uh, you know electronic pivot or something so we can Point it at everything we want to. Zoom in on the that 80s. Was amazing. Jesus. Wow. That oh. was 10 pounds of potatoes and 5 pounds sack, too. <laughs> <laughs> they forced them in there. Ah. Uh, Xbox One and PS4. Uh, pretty cool. New news again? Everybody loving them. Uh, I don't say it's bad news for them, just not, I guess, the best of press for people that care they use three times more the electricity than their previous models <laughs> three times more yep. uh, they said the only one that uses less is the Wii U 
Mm. Said he uses less than the Wii, but of course people bought about four times less <laughs> Wii U's yeah. than they did Wii's. Globally, yeah. the Wii U is using <laughs> less power. <laughs> than my house. <laughs> uh, they said, uh, the current systems this year will use as much electricity as all the homes in Houston, Texas. Hmm. That's a lot. Yeah. They said uh, it's a big part on the Xbox because of the Kinect. Mm -hmm. and the Kinect is always on. Mm -hmm. So that you can say Xbox turn on. Right. Yeah, you know, it never really goes to sleep. The PlayStation is because of its USB ports. Anything plugged into a USB port mm -hmm. is always on. Mm. You know, always ready, you know, it's always reading it. Right, it's always, always ready hot. to go. And people aren't yeah. gonna unplug them every time and plug no. them back in. So they're asking uh, these companies to come out with patches for them. You know, because right now you can't you don't have the option to turn off your connect. If you don't want to, just it is always on, and that's that. Yeah. And the same thing with the PlayStation. They want them to have something where you can turn off ports. Hmm. Yeah. So when you turn it on, you can just go on, on, on. You know, yeah. select from the menu and save yourself money. One thing it didn't say I'd like to know is how much. Let's say if I have an Xbox, well, I have I have an Xbox and a PlayStation. Let's say I get both the new units. How much more would that cost me at my electric bill a month? Mm -hmm. you know, how much would my elect electricity bill raise each month? Yeah, yeah. They need those stickers like the uh, like hot water heaters. Yeah, yeah. This is, of course, everything I buy. You know, it's a good deal. So, I mean, I look at the sticker and it's always like, you're fucked. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, you are the reason for global warming. This guy, what, he's, he just gave he's up. the reason for global warming. Oh. He's the reason why people run into lamp posts when they park. What the hell? Why did he just give up? I mean, there's plenty of space. I know. I don't know how much, like, what does he normally park in? I don't, I don't know. It's not a parking lot. I can't do it. <laughs> I've seen people park tractor trailers in less yeah. space than that. <laughs> Jesus. Well, you could literally fit three full-size cars there. <laughs> Plus, they give you this little yeah, curve. Little scoop. Uh, they said that the Wii U uses a half to third less electricity than those than the newer systems. Well, it doesn't have the video card that those systems doesn't have. have. It doesn't have the you know. Yeah. Doesn't have a Kinect. Doesn't have my uh, the DVD player I just got over the weekend. It um, it had a selection for that in the setup. For it was what? like if you wanted a faster, if you wanted it to turn on faster, it would use more power, but it would. You know, it would go through all the screens and everything faster than it normally oh. would. So it, I guess it would kind of have those running in the background. So when you hit power... Kind of like your computer, you can yeah. tell it if you want it to be faster and use right. more battery. I mean, that's just using more battery, which I guess you essentially have to charge more. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, but I, don't, I tell mine, I'm like, go fucking use yeah. that power. Suck it up. Use it, bitch. Paying for it anyway. And it's always plugged in. God forbid we can't, you know, yeah. use the computer. <laughs> Even though it's a laptop. <laughs> Uh, well, then all the stuff we do on it, I mean, it eats it up so fast. Yeah, uh, I mean, you use it like a desktop. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... Uh, I've been looking at them, too. I don't know what I'm going to end up with. I'm probably just going to wait until we finish our room upstairs. Yeah, you might as well. Just upgrade our desktops, because that's what I use them for anyway. Mm -hmm. Your laptop's nice, but... Yeah, but I, the amount of time I would use it, you know... Right. Oh, we use them less as laptops now. I mean, we yeah. used to kind of leave it on the end table mm -hmm. in the living room if one of us wanted to dick around. Yeah. But. Yeah, I think I'd probably be better off doing that and then just getting, maybe get like a tablet or something. We just don't use the internet as much as we used to for whatever reason. Oh, yeah? I, I don't know if it's because, I mean, we don't do anything different. I, I just wonder if it's because, uh, you know, Facebook is old. I can do that at work. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I don't I hardly ever check Facebook. Hey, you know what I bet it is? Because now we can do it on our phones. Yeah. You know, before we'd be like, oh, let me see the computer. I want to mm -hmm. check Facebook. Or I got to check something on eBay. Or, you know, anything that I would really use for Amazon. Yeah. I can sit there on my phone and do. That's true. So the computer can stay in there. Why mm -hmm. have the computer out here? That's got to be it. Yeah, and that and that's what I'm thinking. You know, just have a yeah a tablet for that kind of thing. Yeah, and tablets we have, and we do keep the tablets on the end table. Mm -hmm. But I mean, essentially, we don't even touch it. If we have to, like, you know, put money in the kids' lunch account or mm -hmm. you know, send out e for something. Yeah, you know, yeah, we'll hop on, but. 
but overall, God, one of us would be on it at some point, you know, from the time we got home from work to the time we went to bed, practically. Mm -hmm. Are you done with it yet? Are you done with it yet? <laughs> I'm going in the computer room because we had a little library room with a, a laptop or a desktop. I'm going in there then. It's not as fast, but I don't care. <laughs> at least it's all. And then we'd be separate. It's like, we don't spend time together. <laughs> I never see you anymore. <laughs> you always in that room. You're always on the laptop. <laughs> laptop hog. You saying I'm a pig? It's not what I meant. Yes, it is. It turns into a whole thing. Man. Now, let's check out this day in history. May 19th, 1749. King George II grants the Ohio Company a charter of several hundred thousand acres. The charter directly challenged the French claim to the Ohio Valley, the direct cause of the French and Indian War of 1754. Huh. So, the king still had power over that? <laughs> yeah, well, a bunch of... He Basically under the table, a stripper. They were allowing like uh, like fur trappers and stuff to go into the Ohio Territory. Well, during that time, there was a bunch of you know Virginia like planters and stuff. They got together and they you know they wanted to expand into like other types of markets. You know, okay. so they formed that Ohio Company. Well, they petitioned the Crown and then the King just granted him all that land, even though it wasn't really his to grant. France had claim on that land. So he granted him the land, you know, for them to use since, you know, it was mainly colonists that were inhabiting it anyway. Hmm. And then that, you know, kicked off a war because you're granting away our territory, you know, it wasn't yours in the first place. <laughs> Your colonists were there illegally, but how we want. It's kind of like when you have Section 8 people living in your rental property. <laughs> yes. You know, that's a different thing. Exactly that. But except they get to keep it after... <laughs> yeah, know, it's theirs. Squatters it's rights. Yeah, I've been sending the company, uh, the rental agency, like, hey, you know, where's my keys? Where's my keys? And she said, well, unless you can get in there, they still have the keys, which means they still have uh, remain like rights to the property. Yeah. I'm like, really? Well, I'm changing the locks this week. Which is okay. Yeah. That's enough. May 19th, 1588. The Spanish Armada sets sail from Lisbon to seize control of the English Channel. This looks like a good one. Yeah. Delayed by the storms, the Armada, 130 ships, 2,500 guns, and 30,000 men arrived in late July. Wow. English with superior gun range picked apart the Armada on July 28th. The Spanish so say, retreated. Yeah, they, were, to they Calais, had to France. pull off to uh, Calais in France and to try to, you know, get away from the English ships. It just outranged them by, you know, miles. <laughs> the English sent ships loaded with explosives <laughs> into the harbor? Yeah. Holy shit. And they were attacking them from the get-go. Originally, it was supposed to leave earlier in the year, you know, to get there by early spring. But um, they attacked them in port before they even left Lisbon. Wow. <clears throat> so they were harassing them the entire way. Bullies. And it just kept going. Well, it was either that or die. I mean, yeah. pretty much. 30,000 men, you know, that's, that's a lot Probably to be landing anywhere. day, they sailed for the Netherlands. Was they, the the Armada, okay. yeah. They picked up and decided to keep moving rather than sitting still. And then the Dutch fleet came out, <laughs> came at them, and then they were forced to flee more north to try to just get all the way away from Christ. When I lived Europe. in Scotland, yep, they had to sail up and around into the North Sea. And that's they didn't have the supplies to do that, they had the supplies to get up there, you know take out the basically the, the British fleet and you know lay claim up there but started running out of supplies and storms and everything else so they just gave up as they <laughs> attempted the difficult journey back to Spain around Ireland yep took the long way Jesus, back man they fucking 
That was a chase. Yeah. That was like with the uh, like the big sailboat races, you know, they go around the world. <laughs> yep. <laughs> wow. And your mind arrived back in Spain in October. Half the original fleet had been destroyed. Setting the stage for England as a world-class naval power. Ending the era of boarding and close quarter fighting in naval combat. Yeah, because yeah, of the range of the guns. You, yeah, once you get range on you. Yep, that's it. There was no need for it. Wow, see, that's, see again, 1588 mm-hmm. was kind of the end of close combat. It just seems like it would have been later. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, granted, it still happened with smaller ships, but... Oh, sure. Any big, you know, naval confrontation was... Hey, pirates still range. do it today. You know? <coughs> yeah. Go up board with you. a tiny, you know, little boat. Take over a big boat. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happened to the light traffic from this morning? Where do these people come from? I don't know. Are they going to the beach already? Could be. <sighs> Friday's going to be hellish. Yeah, Fridays we will be ending the show way before we reach our destination. Well, we can't get people to watch a one-hour show. We're going to get them to watch a two-hour show. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're leaving early that day. It'll be. Yeah, that's true. I'm saying normal Fridays. Yeah, normal Fridays are going to be... Uh, no, we'll have to change the format. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Schmakin. Schmakin? Schmakin. What are you telling me? What I'm kind of derivative of... of bacon is this? It is an all-beef bacon product. Schmakin. So I guess they say bacon schmakin? Well, I don't, I don't get it. Schmakin. How does... It's uh, smoked and cured glazed beef slices. Smoked. Okay, smaking. I was but, wondering how they were getting this in there from beef. Well, they got schmaking. S C H M E H. Schmaking. All right, so uh, just a play on it. That's why I'm saying bacon, right. schmaking. Gotcha. But it's still not. They say it tastes like bacon. Yeah. But it's not bacon. No. You know, to be bacon, you gotta be pork. You gotta be a pig. Sure. So, I don't know, so schmakin. They say that it has half the uh, fat and calories of regular bacon, mm-hmm. 60% less sodium. They said anything you put bacon on normally, use this stuff. Put some schmakin on there. Put some schmakin on it. It's good with everything. Hmm. Uh, it will be, unfortunately, because I was thinking, we got to get schmakin. Sure. But it is not yet available. It will be available in Chicago this summer. Oh, cool. Test market. And then they hope, yeah, and then they hope to... Perfect city to start. Oh, no, fuck yeah. They put, that's Meat City USA good right Lord, there. Lord, man. You talk about bacon on everything. That is the beef capital. Good God. Such good steaks there, too. Never oh, been. Oh, man. Never been. I like their hot dogs, though. Hot dogs are wonderful. Chicago-style hot dog, man. To me, that's that's the only way a hot dog should be made. Chicago-style. The pizza, it's amazing. not so much. Yeah, I don't know about that. You know, I, I like a... Deep dish thing or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's like a slice of pizza. This yeah. is pretty much... I mean, it's like a pie, it really. It's a pizza pie. Yeah. But, eh, not my thing. First, was trying to get over the turn signal. Mm-hmm. I got the best thing the other day. I'm coming home from Philly, and driving on Route 1. I took Route 1 home. Yeah. And I'm going, you know, it's two lanes. And I'm going by the bridge. I'm approaching the bridge. Mm-hmm. And uh, this woman... Or no, I just passed the bridge. It was the first exit after the bridge. So I'm in the right lane. The woman comes up from the left lane. There's two women in a car. We put the turn signal on. And there was about not a whole lot of space between us. I look behind me. There's nobody behind me. Yeah. Right? So the woman in the passenger seat sticks out her arm and she starts like... Like, tell me, like, to slow down, like, slow down. So I'm thinking, holy shit, you know, this, this must be, you know, I, I, they, they must be in trouble or something. They got to get over. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck yeah. So I slow down. They get in front of me and just keep driving. And they were doing the speed limit, you know, and it's just like so they taking get, a good old time. They just wanted to get in front of me. They just wanted to tell you how to drive. Yeah, slow down, slow down. We want to get over. They had the turn signal on. Yeah. Slow down, slow down. I was like, yeah, man. But she was, like, really adamant about it. Yeah. I'm thinking, is this how they do? Is this what they do? And she couldn't slow down and get behind me mm-hmm. and go slower than me. She had to speed up to get in front of me. Dude, 
it is. It blew my mind that they would eat. I don't know. Like it, it's every, every day, day it down. seems more like doggy dog. Like yeah, on the fucking road, man. It's just. I wanted to slam into their fucking car so bad. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. Like yeah. I was nice because I thought you were in trouble. Yeah. And I thought you had an emergency. Or like a wheel was gonna fly off. Like, we can't quite or... fit, so slow down. Yeah. And until then, dude, I drove all the way up to North Philly. Not an asshole to be seen. Really? Not an asshole to be seen. Got you surprised two me, thirds of the way home. I'm thinking, wow, out of the what a good day this is. And then that bit. <laughs> uh, out of the woodwork they come. Yeah. As soon as you cross that canal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as soon as I got into stupid land. LSD land. <laughs> Bacon though, man. How about making? that? Uh, how about the the bacon that doesn't need to be refrigerated? That stuff that it's just got in packages, what? like sitting there near the frozen or not the the cool section. Have you ever seen that stuff? Near the cool section, but yeah. not in it's, the cool section. It's it's just wow. like bacon that like, like pepperoni. No, it's bacon that doesn't need to be cooked, doesn't need to be refrigerated. Nothing. Just be, what is it? Exactly. <laughs> Because it's not bacon, yeah. and it's not even schmaking. You know, it's kind of even after refrigerator schmaking, it's usually that and like uh, Sunny Delight sitting right next to each other. <laughs> it's gotta be like a uh, like a spam type. I don't know what product. it is. It looks suspect. Is it vacuum sealed? I, I don't know. I'm not gonna purchase that. Oh, well, you can't tell like in the bag. Oh, I don't know. I, I never get that close to it. It seems irradiated or something. I'm gonna have to check it out. Yeah. Take a picture. Put it on our Twitter site that nobody <laughs> looks at. Six and that's people. Will see. That's the other thing too. Like people are always worried about like food that says on the package that it's been irradiated or whatever. Uh -huh. But pretty much any spice that you get has been irradiated. Really? Yeah, because it it kills a uh, bacteria. Oh, okay. Okay. So any spice that you get, any regular spice, has been irradiated. Huh. So can't cook don't spices. fear the irradiation. That's it's fine. fine. You'll live. Yes. People, wow, live longer these days. But yeah, I mean, anything that's been like, you know, people freak out about genetically all, like modified. Yeah, I want an all natural germ. Everything <laughs> yeah. else, you know, it's, it's fine. Uh, the young bean. There he is. Huh? The young bean. That's the coffee shop, like right next to. Oh yeah. Yeah. Check that out. You want me to tell him to slow down? <laughs> slow down. That's how we do it. Here. Slow down. You got any, you got any coffee? <laughs> slow down. A uh, 17 year old Brett Bouchard lost his arm the other day, well, a couple weeks ago. Just blow his elbow. In a pizza off. machine or something? What a was pasta it? Pasta machine. Pasta machine. What okay. the fuck kind of pasta machine is that? I don't know, dude. <laughs> and it wasn't like it, like the pasta plant. Uh -huh. It was at a pizza parlor. What? It was at a restaurant, uh, Viola's restaurant in Messina, New York, uh, just along the Canadian border. But he, they said he was cleaning it, and it took his arm clean off. Holy cow, what the dude. Like, I mean, I don't care what kind of, how busy your restaurant is, you can get away with one of them tiny little pasta yeah. Dude, makers. what kind of, what kind of pasta you're making that can fit an arm-sized... I'm guessing maybe that was the area where you put the dough in, and then maybe it has this thing that, like, needs the dough, and it needed his arm off. Ugh. But, uh, they said he was quick with the tourniquet, and he dug out the arm, got it on ice, and, he uh... He dug it out? He dug it out. What? I can't imagine he put his own tourniquet on. I'm sure he grabbed his arm and said, ah, help me. But uh, they said he got a tourniquet on quick. That was three weeks ago. Four surgeries later, uh, they said he's looking good. Uh, the arm's doing well. Uh, they had to transfer new muscles to his hand. Uh, and after that, he should regain his sense of touch. He said he probably won't have any problems because he was so fast to tie it off and, oh. you know, get everything on ice. God, I can't even imagine. It would have blew my mind. The, Which part? <laughs> you know? I, yeah. Yeah. Wow, man. So, yeah, I'm going to do a little research on pasta machines. Pasta machines? 
there was a place on Kirkwood Highway, and you used to be able to watch the machines make the pasta. Uh huh. And literally, the thing was this big. Yeah. And it was a decent sized restaurant. And they're making pasta in that. Yeah. You know? So you know, yeah. I don't even know if you could have lost a finger in that thing. I don't know. Bam. Uh-huh. Ah. Right off. Because it was high up too. It was like, like there. Well, he said it was below the elbow. Oh, below the elbow. Uh, okay. His bandages went up. All right, that's what there. I saw. Yeah, I, I saw the picture band. and I saw the headline. All right, so it was below the elbow? Yeah, it cut it right off below the elbow. <laughs> oh, ah. So he's walking around carrying this thing, like, help me! Look what the pasta machine did to me! He can probably wave really well. Yeah. Hey. Uh, let's see, I thought I had something else on him. I guess not. Yeah, it just blew my mind. I'm glad he's doing good, but... Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah, I, oh god, I can't even imagine. Did uh, I guess that's the thing. That's what I was gonna ask you if you had ever, but you never lost any. You never the broke packages? any bones. No, 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 I've never broken any bones. I, I mean, I've I've cut my finger pretty deep where I had to like, I had to go bones. to the emergency room. Yeah, it was, you know, I was I was messing around. I was like putting a putting a computer together and like popping out like the uh, the aluminum like inside. It's, you know, I was adding, like, another uh, drive to, like, the front of it. And the, the inside edge of that, when I was going in, I, you know, popped it in, and my hand, like, slid up, and just, boom, uh, and I was like, oh, that's not too... <laughs> yeah, the blood always comes like, after. Holy shit. You it know, allows you to go, huh. It's like seeing, like, tendons and stuff. And I was like, uh, man, I'm not supposed to see any of that. Uh, Guess I gotta go to the hospital. So, yeah. like, I wrapped it up and stuff, and, like... Turn myself down there. She's like, you're not supposed to wrap it this tight. Who said that? The lady at the thing. They tell you like, wrap it tight. That's the kid like, with the arm. Yeah, you'll lose a, You'll lose it. And I was like, okay. Jesus. I, there was a lot of blood. I had to drive. <laughs> I don't know. 911. Yeah, I was like, I have no way I'm calling a, you know, ambulance for that. I just cut my finger, you know? When I was a kid, my, uh... My sister took dance class or baton class, whatever. She took a bunch of stuff like that. And uh, she did it with another girl. So each week, one of the moms would drive them to class, and the other mom would babysit uh, me and the other girl's brother. Mm-hmm. So we're in my house one day, and you know, we're playing. I remember we're playing in my room. And my sister gets home, and all I hear is just her screaming and crying. I mean, she was probably seven. I was five, screaming and crying. And I'm like, what the hell? So I go downstairs, like, I'm like halfway down the steps, I see her in front of the door, holding her hand, screaming, <laughs> crying, and her finger just hanging oh. by the skin. Just hanging, and blood. I mean, oh, like a horror movie, just blood yeah. pouring down the arm. And I'm like, first thing I was like, man, I had to make sure I was seeing what I was seeing. Yeah. And then I kind of started laughing a little bit, you know, because this is like, yeah, yeah, when you fight a lot with your sibling or whatever. I don't know That's what it what was. Get. I started laughing. I was like, yeah. but I didn't realize that, you know, I don't right. know. That was five. But they had to uh, drive her back to the hospital. And what happened was uh, she was getting out of the car, and her friend went to shut the door. Uh-huh. And my sister realized she left her baton in the car and went to go grab for it. And the car door shut on her finger and just chopped that shit off. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. So my mom drove to the hospital. My dad sat in the back seat, and there's a station wagon. So sat in the back with her with a blanket, like holding her finger yeah. on. And he's getting sick in the back and everything. It was oh just like, <laughs> oh yeah. And I wasn't there. It had to be a sight. They rushed her, and the other mom stayed there. And it's it, it's us. weird. Like, like, I mean, some doors, you know, they get chopped the hell off. I mean, that happened to me once. Like. We were riding to, we were like driving down Main Street, like a bunch of friends and I, and like we parked, and I was getting out of the back, and Bob got out of the front, and um, you know, I, I went to like grab and then, you know, hop out the side. Well, as soon as I grabbed, you know, he, he was closing the door already, and like, you know, my hand was like, my fingers were inside, I was like, oh. open, I was like, open the door, <laughs> open the door. Oh no. oh no, oh no, you Open didn't know. And um, and I was like, he's like, why, what's going on? I was like, 
<laughs> Open the door. <laughs> Open the door. <laughs> oh my god. I finally opened it. And nothing? Nothing. See, if you were in this girl's car, know, you'd dude, have I, no hand. Yeah, I'd have nothing, man. You'd have little nubbins. I the, the pasta maker. I'd be driver, doors. you'd be passenger. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be stumpy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember a couple months later, uh, me and my mom were coming back from like grocery shop or something. It was wintertime. And she shut the door and she shut her own finger in the car door. Oh, God. And she, uh, she panicked. Like she, first she froze. And she's like, my finger's in the door. But I was like, oh, open it. So she opened it. And again, I'm, I'm five. And uh, man, she, uh, so she opened the door. Now she had gloves on at the time. These big, uh, like, knitted gloves. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's freezing out. So you know, she's crying. Her finger's killing her. Yeah. And uh, she comes in and, and she sits down. I'm like, all right, take off your glove. And she's like, I don't want to. I don't want to take it off. And I'm like, mom, you have to. You know, like, she's like, no, no. She's like, let me just, it hurts. Let me just let it calm down. And I was like, so I remember, I remember vividly, I was watching a Snoopy cartoon. Mm-hmm. I was eating M&M's, peanut M&M's. <laughs> and like trying to make her feel better. I was like, mom, you want some M&M's? No, 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 I'm fine. Yeah, so I remember she called my dad. He was working uh, at the time. He's working like overtime or whatever. He was got home. another finger for you. And he was like, yeah. And she's like, and I guess he talked her into taking the glove off. So she took it off real slow. And she was fine. Mm. Just a little swollen. Was that after? Yeah, it was like three months after my sister. So So I'm like, here we go. You know, and I'm thinking, it's just me and mom. What do we do then? I I can hold her finger on, but how are we going to get the, you know, I didn't know 911 or nothing at the time. I didn't even fucking know if they had. Do they have 911? 32 years ago? 33 years ago? Yeah. Was that a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't remember shoving it down her throat. Like, 911. For emergency, I would have just dialed zero. That was always the thing. Yeah. Have the operator do the work for you. <laughs> Could you connect me with uh, <laughs> someone who can connect fingers? Yeah, you have a finger connector. Whoever did my sisters, get them on the line. <laughs> yeah, her finger's fine now, my sister. She's just the very, very, very tip of it. She's just a little numb. Mm-hmm. But that's how mine was for the longest time. Like the tip of it was real numb, <sighs> and it it came back. Like if I can, you know. It's I had it now. Nah, that's probably about two years ago now. But I woke up in the morning. I had to go to work, and. I didn't have any feeling in my last two fingers mm-hmm. on my right hand. And I'm like, man, I must have stuffed on my hand wrong. And I'm like trying to like shake it out, you know, and get the blood flow. And man. nothing, nothing. I didn't have any feeling in my fingers about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. What? I don't know if I laid on a nerve. Yeah, it must have. Wrong or whatever. And, you know, like as the day went on, like I felt it come up a little bit. But, like, I just couldn't use man. those fingers. I started man. freaking out. No kiss. But, yeah, it's all it Uh, da, da, da. 22-year-old Danielle Shea of Quincy, Massachusetts. Uh, she went to the university, uh, what is it, Quinnipiac University in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. So graduation was coming up the other day. And uh, she called a bomb threat into the graduation because she didn't want her parents to know that she dropped out a year before. Yeah, so she drops out of college, doesn't tell her parents. Oh, there it is. She, uh, oh, baby on board. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Do they really have a baby? Well, they got a baby on board. There's a but, baby on there. Ugh. Ugh. Still. Like, little, she saw that and thought that was yeah. a good idea. Uh-huh. Oh, these things. I finally get to use one. Because I have a baby. Got it from the, you know, the... This Where do you thing. find them now, anyway? Yeah, like, I can't tell you the last time I saw one of them in the store. Oh, wow. Baby on board. <laughs> Gosh, it's a distinguished cunt on board. <laughs> so, oh, okay. So the, so, so the girl drops out of college the year before, didn't want her parents to know. Told her parents she was still in school. Mm-hmm. Her mom's still paying thousands of dollars for school. I guess she's giving it directly to her to pay to, you know, to pay for school. Wow. She went as far to even, she bought a uh, gown and cap, a cap and gown, and said, okay, I'm going to graduation, go. let's go. And they go to graduation. So about 20 minutes before the graduation, she calls the school up and says, uh, there's a bomb in the library on campus. Mm-hmm. So now the 20 minutes go by, goes by, and the graduation is about to start, and nothing's happening. So she makes another phone call. She runs and makes another call to the school and says, uh, there's a bunch of bombs all over the campus, and I see that you haven't uh, 
having taken everyone out of the auditorium or stadium, whatever they were doing it, for graduation, and that's not a good idea. So then they freak out and they, they switch the whole graduation to whatever sports stadium is nearby. I forget which one they said it was. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, some bank, you, you know, stadium. And uh, so they, they, but they figure out the phone. I guess they have the cameras, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they go to the graduation and they take her out in cuffs. They find her there, like waiting in line, even though she wasn't yeah. supposed to be there. And uh, they, they arrest her in the cap and gown. Wow. She got to be taken out, man. She she was trying to fight it hard. That's a mugshot. But yeah, it was great. Um, she has been charged, twenty thousand dollar bail, and now she has shame coming from the family. I gotta give her credit though. That was. I mean, she was trying to hide it all the way through graduation. She was. If she pulled that off, she was gonna tell the family she graduated. I'm sure. I'm sure she already had a diploma printed up. At home, you know, to oh, okay. put on the wall. I was, I was thinking like maybe like they were going there or something, you know, like the family was going. No, she told them, "Let's go." I'm graduating today. Uh -huh. I guess she figured by the bomb scare they would, you know, not have it and just say, "Oh, you know, they had a cancer graduation." Sorry, yeah. but yeah, I got my diploma still. Huh. Good for her. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> she tried. I don't know what the. Uh, I don't know what the rationale behind like the bomb threat thing is because you know the the event still happens like yeah it, I don't think she was counting on that I bet she panicked when they said okay now we're having it here she probably yeah. thought they were just gonna say it's canceled uh -huh. sorry she would tell her family that they didn't reschedule it yeah we're just gonna mail out our diplomas aren't you proud of me mom and dad so the mom wants to know what happened to all the money she gave her yeah they need it for bail <laughs> The Longitude Prize of 2014. Uh, ch -ch -ch these ones I had to print up. I was running out of time. Yeah. Uh, da -da -da, prize. Prize commemorates the 300th anniversary of the Longitude Act. In 1714, the British government challenged inventors to solve one of the great scientific challenges of the time, how to pinpoint a ship's location at sea by knowing its longitude. Uh, it was solved by Yorkshire watchmaker and carpenter John Harrison, who designed the chronometer, the first seafaring clock that allowed accurate navigation. So, uh, in an attempt to replicate the pioneering spirit, the public is being asked to vote on six major challenges to be highlighted on the science program Horizon on uh, BBC Two. Oh, Horizon's great. And uh, what they do is they're offering a 10 million pound reward uh, for whichever problem they solve. If you can solve it first, you get $10 million. Mm -hmm. uh, so here's the six challenges. Paralysis. How can we restore movement to those with paralysis? Antibiotics. How can we prevent the rise of resistance to antibiotics? Mm -hmm. Food. How can we ensure everyone has nutritious, sustainable food? Dementia. How can we help people with dementia to live independently for longer? Flight, how can we fly without damaging the environment? And water, how can we ensure everyone has access to safe and clean water? So people are gonna vote on which one they want people to solve, and that will then be the problem for this year. Uh, so by the end of the June, the public will vote, will decide what the challenges will be given $10 million, and they have up to five years to find a solution for this. Uh, da, 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 what would you select? What would you vote for? Paralysis, <laughs> antibiotics, food, dementia, flight, or water. Flight, I think you can nix off. That would be the least one to me. How can we fly without damaging the environment? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, water's water and food are that seem like the most important. Water and but food are important. Antibiotics equally. You know, I don't. I don't know. I would say water because that's you know you're not going more than a few days without water. So yeah, I mean, but and, I think, and the fact I think the key word for me there is how can we ensure everyone yeah. has access to safe and clean water. Some people don't have; they die from the water they drink if, I, they, if they can find it. I think that may be solved though. There's a there's a invention I saw that's uh, it was like this uh, I forget what he called it. Some kind of uh, I don't remember the name of it, but it was a, it was like a straw, and it was a filtration I straw. I saw that, and yeah. And you can just drink 
any yep. water. Any it water. It doesn't matter it. what it is. I and it so where did I see that? Filters it as you drink it. Oh, I saw it on the, the website I talked about a lot called Dude, I Want That. Mm -hmm. And you can buy one on yeah. there. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so you go camping, you bring that with you. Yeah. You know, or hiking or. Yeah. So, you know, it, But you put that in these communities that have shit water, you know. Right. And that's what they were doing, you know, but, you know, each family would need one. Each mm -hmm. person pretty much would need one. But, uh, okay, so cross that off because they kind of have. Yeah. That's so a flight that antibiotics, how can we prevent the rise of resistance to antibiotics? Don't worry about that later. I think well, that'll be solved anyway. I don't think you have to put a special thing out there. I don't know. I mean, that's that's a hot issue, though, especially with the, uh, there's the MERS virus, oh, yeah. the Middle Eastern yeah. thing that people are getting, like, from hospitals. Yeah. And that's resistant to but all. But then there's, I mean, you sell food. How can we ensure everyone has nutritious, sustainable food? They hate to say anyone go without food. Sure. Yeah. I mean, and it's that's become a more of a problem too. Is sure. how do you have, you know, how do you keep up the yields that we have now? Dementia stinks. That's. I don't want to sound mean by saying this, but it usually strikes older people. When they're on their way out yeah, anyway. Usually. Not always. I know not always, but I'm not going to say save the few instead of the many. Yeah. And then <clears throat> paralysis, man, you know, and again, that would be saving the few instead of the many. Yeah, but, but I mean, I, can't even, I wouldn't even consider that as like a fact. Consider what you would think would be the most interesting to work on. How about that? Rather than its effects. I think they would all be interesting to work on, except the flight one. You don't think the flight one would be interesting? Let me fly without damaging the environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not my thing. That's a that's an engine engineering question. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just. That's creating an engine that has less or no pollution. Yeah. Not my thing. Mm -hmm. Not my thing. I just think I just can't, I see my thing is it's a personal thing. I cannot imagine ever becoming paralyzed. Yeah. Anytime I hear a story where someone became paralyzed, mm -hmm. it just like, it breaks my heart for like what they go through in yeah. the, your fucking life. And, and how do you keep going from that? Yeah, man. And I just, I just wish I could cure everybody that was paralyzed. Well, there you go. See, that narrows it down. Well, definitely narrows it I think in between that and food, like I said, food, you'd be helping the world. Sure. You know, at the same rate, I hate to see any child go you know, anybody, but especially children, mm -hmm. starve. You know, these kids die from starvation. Right. That, that breaks my heart, too. I think for the... For a personal level, I would go paralysis, but for the betterment of the world, I would go food. Mm -hmm. You know, once everyone eats, everyone can live. Maybe the more people you have living, the better, you know, the more people living, more doctors, other people that can fix these other problems. I, guess that's yeah, I agree. I, I I agree with flight because you know that that seems like that can be solved another way. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be just. Flight. Yeah, I'm sure people are working on that now. Yeah, just, well, working to on make that a better product. Working on you know different ways to travel too. It doesn't necessarily have to be flight as the answer. Right. You know. So, you know, I'd say food for like food would be the one I would be more interested in. I'd vote for that one. All right, so let's work on that. Yeah. So we can get $10 million. Well, it's just you got to vote before. Let's vote on that. and then. But whatever one they choose, we're working on. Right. We're going to solve that problem. The garage problem. Fuck yeah, man. Da -da, da -da 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 -da. Hmm. Which way to go? Let's go Comcast. Why not? Comcast plans to cap everyone's data. Yeah. Cap their usage. Uh, they thought about it at one point, then they said no. Now they said they're going to have a usage-based billing model for everyone within five years. Customers have to pay a fee if they use too much bandwidth in a month. But the cap might be as high as 350 gigabytes or even 500 gigabytes. I have no idea how much I use, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, you just go by, like... Well, you said you don't do a lot of stuff online anymore, so... Well... 
except for uploading these videos every night to YouTube. <coughs> yeah. That's got to be a good bit. Yeah. yeah. You know, again, I don't know if I'm using 350 gigabytes a month. Yeah. Uh, but they said, you know, they would keep increasing that over time. They would increase the cap over time because they always want everyone to have what they can, but they feel they can give better quality service if everybody has the same capabilities. They're already experimenting with the 300 gigabyte caps in some markets, uh, which it once told a company it would only affect 2% of their users. Right. It's a shot across the bow at cord cutters. Oh, uh, that's why they're doing it. People are cutting the cord. Yeah. I'm not using cable anymore. Right. I'm going to stream my movies. All right, you want to do that? We'll get you. Yeah. Get you one way or the other. Welcome back to Comcast. Yep. Cock sucking motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's fucking. It's, it's amazing how TV rules the world. Yeah. Well, it really is. Definitely rules this country, that's for sure. Wow. Ah, it even says in quotes. Da, 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 da. Could essentially say, want to drop our TV service? Go ahead. But it's going to cost you. Right. So Fuck even you, if you Tom even Case. if you sign up for, you know, HBO or something else to get their online only thing, they're still yeah. gonna get you. Yeah, they're still gonna have you. You will always be indebted to Comcast. Yeah. Sons of bitches. Well let's go to this one since we're talking about TV. YouTube makes a billion dollar play for a game streaming site. Uh, it's on the verge of a billion dollar plus deal to buy Twitch. Are you familiar with that? The, yeah, it's like a, um, you can upload videos of like, like gameplay videos and stuff to right. that. Right, and that's all it is. You, you upload your gameplay yeah. and people can stream it and watch other people's sessions. The company boasts it has more than 45 million monthly users. Yep. I don't get it. What? I don't like watching other people play games. Yeah. And uh, maybe you're watching it to f solve something, but just go on an online walkthrough. Right. And you read it in two seconds. You could, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I don't get it, man. There's a whole big thing out there. There's watching, you know, these tournaments and stuff and watching. I mean, a guy I work with, he'll watch an entire game played from beginning to end before he buys it, so he knows if he wants to buy it or not. And for him, the fun is going through and playing it, because he likes it so much. And he'll, he'll literally watch the whole thing. <laughs> and again, he's not alone. There's 45 million people a month yeah. checking this shit out. I, uh, for me, the fun of the game is, let me play the demo. If that's fun, I'll play the game. The fun is not knowing what's coming up, and yeah, it's like how to do things, you know, the yeah. puzzles, and... I already know you're just moving your fingers, going through the motions. Yeah, you're barely doing that now with most games. Ah, oh, fucking no. <laughs> so yeah, I don't, I don't know. Well, uh, so YouTube is gonna buy them. YouTube is gonna buy them. Okay. And I guess they'll put everything. You know, it's just it'll just be like another YouTube site. You know, you're yeah. watching uploaded videos. And it's probably because what happens is people, some people make a living off that. Mm -hmm. They upload their videos on YouTube of them playing a game. Yeah. And people watch the shit out of them. And these people make so much money, they quit their jobs. Mm -hmm. And they do this. Uh, and I guess this is a way of people to not be on YouTube and do it. So YouTube says, well, all right, we'll just fucking buy them. Uh, Wall Street Journal characterized talks at an early stage. YouTube is bracing for antitrust objections, given how large its lead already is in the online video space. Google unit has more than a billion monthly users. Wow, a billion monthly users. We get two of them. <laughs> Thanks. Like streaming service. Thanks, both of you. YouTube Live actually lags behind Twitch. Basically, Twitch users are engaged while YouTube users aren't. And engagement is what drives advertising. Uh -huh. So, there you go, YouTube. It's amazing how much money that site makes. Yeah, it truly is. Oh, and God. For something so simple. And again, it's something someone created for people to do, mm -hmm. and he got paid the bucks, and they just grew it and grew it and grew it. Yeah. It's amazing. Because not that long ago, it was nothing, you know? 
now, I mean, people weren't even making money on it. You know, but when they bought it up, it wasn't there was no advertising on there. Yeah. You know, maybe on the side, like there would be an advertisement, but. Yeah. Holy man. <laughs> uh, a New York man sues for every penny on earth. Every, every penny. penny. Okay. Uh, Anton Parisima. As a man who knows how to think big, the New Yorker has filed a 22-page handwritten suit in Manhattan court for two undecillion dollars. Undecillion dollars. The sum is written as a two followed by 36 zeros. It is likely a new record for a demand in a lawsuit. It's also more than even exists in the world by a long shot. Uh, but there are more than a thousand defend- defendants to bear the brunt. They include the New York City Transit Authority, the entire city of New York, Oban Payne Store, LaGuardia Airport, a Kmart store, a dog owner, several health care providers, and a thousand John Doe's. Because they wouldn't take his penny as, as payment? or Well, at the center of the dissatisfaction seems to be a dog bite sustained on the city bus. A Chinese couple photographing him while he was being treated for it and being overcharged for coffee at the airport. This guy just had a bad day. Yeah, really. He was bitten by a dog. People were taking pictures of it happening, pointing at him. And then he got overcharged for coffee at an airport. That's terrible. Don't you assume you're going to get overcharged for everything in an airport? Pretty much, before you even walk in there. I love airport food. I love going to an airport just eating the shit food they have Dude, some of the best pasta I've ever had was Uh at an airport. Yeah. Dude, I mean, hush it, puppies. I got some of the best hush puppies ever really? at an airport. Hush puppies. I wouldn't have thought that. But yeah, no, they were delicious. Yeah, man, pasta. It, like came, they, they just a little machine steamed it up. It was really, really good. Oh. I mean, I was surprised. Uh, let's see. Uh, ba, ba, ba. So that all happened, and then why? I don't understand why he's suing. Well, he characterizes the incidents as civil rights violations, personal injury, discrimination on national origin, retaliation, harassment, fraud, attempted murder, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and conspiracy to defraud. Uh, He's seeking punitive damages for all of that. This appears to be at least his 20th suit since 2004. So he's about two lawsuits a year. Uh, He has sued casinos, banks, and the People's Republic of China. (laughs) Among others. Yeah. (laughs) This guy. I mean... What a character. He must just get nuttier by the year. You know, I mean, to the point you're finally suing for more money that's on the planet. For everything that pisses you off in a day. Yeah, I don't understand what the pennies come into it. every day. What was the pennies? Well, he was suing for every cent on earth, right? He wasn't. He wasn't asking for pennies, or no, no, no. Just every. Just all the all money. The money. All the money on earth. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's entitled to it. After well, that, sure. After that dog bite. <laughs> it's just like. I mean, he's got to be crazy because to think that that would. Yeah, you know, it's, it's going to get thrown out. Well, no. Who's gonna... who's crazy? Is it him coming up with these things or? And it would be him if he is the lawyer that's filing these suits, or right. the lawyer that's bringing this in True. and saying, you know, good sure. idea. Yeah, it's got to be him representing himself because the only way a law a law firm would take that at first would be to get their name out there. Yeah, you at know, first, but get two it. years since. Well, you mean every one of his cases? Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe he's successful every other time. I didn't say he wasn't. Yeah. Maybe this time he said, I'm just going for it all. I will have all the money. I think it's safe to assume he wasn't. But yeah, I'm, saying, I'm guessing. Like I said, he sued the Republic of China. Right. Good luck with that one, buddy. Yeah, I thought it was going to be more interesting. Like, he was suing for pennies because... No, no, I just thought it was good because he was suing for more money in the world. Uh-huh. And everybody. Yeah. Even for being overcharged. You sue someone because they overcharge you for coffee. Right. It's their right to overcharge you. It's your right to not buy it. Yeah. You're the one that paid. You know, or buy a smaller cup. I don't know if you didn't have the money or whatever. You should be rich enough for all your lawsuits. Right. Crying out loud. For crying in general. Uh, 
So, all right, well, that's what we got. We're near the end of our journey, so that'll do it for yeah, this guy. Yeah. He's driving off his lawn. Yep. Fuck it, man. Don't move the cars around. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> uh, well, that'll do it for this episode of The Commute. Remember to like and subscribe on Facebook and on YouTube. Check out our website, twocommute.com. That's T-W-O, commute.com. Follow us on Twitter, at Driver Passenger. Just making sure this guy was going to yeah, not cause a head-on collision. <laughs> and uh, send us an email about anything you want, things you want us to talk about, things you got to say, good or bad, at the Commute Podcast at Comcast.net. Hope to see you soon.